All right, Elliot Friedman has way, made his way over to the lounge. Fried picked worked. up a blazer and uh, collected his thoughts. So let's start with Petrangelo. McDavid just said uh, he would like to see it suspended, not a hockey play, but of course it's out of his hands. Let's start with Petrangelo first before we get into Nurse. Oh, I, I think he's like I don't want to make any definitive statements. It just ended, and I assume they'll make their decisions tomorrow. But he's put himself in real trouble. There's. There's no question about that. As McDavid said, it's not a hockey play. It's, you know, I like I understand Petrangelo's upset because the Oilers are all over him and they're 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 beating him up pretty good. But you can't do that. No. And um, you know the, and you know I, the, a, a suspension is definitely not out of the realm of possibility. I'm trying to think of the last time I saw a guy lift his stick up that high. Before yeah, it, it's been a long time. The other thing here is I was surprised like a bunch of the other Oilers didn't come running in there. Mm -hmm. So that like, like all those other guys, you don't need McDavid fighting Petrangelo there because a lot of bad things can happen. But there, there's no question that, that Petrangelo is in trouble and they'll just see what they're going to – like they always weigh it. Um, it doesn't look like Dreisaitl's injured, but you can't do that. And the only reason I'm not going to definitively say 100% it's happening is because I think everybody will take a deep breath and kind of reconvene tomorrow. But he's, he's definitely in trouble. Now what's going to go down with Nurse? So Nurse is a bit of a different situation. So the, basically the way it works is if you uh, commit an instigator in the last five minutes of regulation or any point in overtime, it's an automatic suspension. The coach is fined $10,000, and this, the suspension can be rescinded. Now, the easy thing to do here would be to keep Nurse's suspension and suspend Petrangelo. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that that's what uh, someone was just texting me, that that's the very easy thing they could do. Mm -hmm. They could say, okay, both of you guys are missing a defenseman for game five. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I have seen these instigators rescinded before. Um, I would tend to think that that would probably be the way they would lean. But, again, I'm not going to say it 100%. And the fact that, you know, Petrangelo's situation is now part of this too, I think there's a lot of different factors at play. It's, you know what, like, uh, basically what someone said to me was there's a lot of things they got to decide. So rescinding an instigator, it's obviously it's not a black and white thing. What's, what's worked in the past? Like, why has it been rescinded before? Is there uh, anything flagrant that stands uh, out? I, I think it's, like, uh, like I, I think what it comes down to is sometimes, like, did they feel it was over the top? Um, okay. You know, was it was it something where someone got hurt? Um, you know, like this one, like nurse, nurse. He's, yeah, he's yeah. very clearly. Yeah. He's getting, he, he's in a little deep. For you know, he, he's very clearly out there to uh, like he's mad. He saw what just happened at Drysital, and, and those two guys are really close. And you know, he, he you see what he's out doing there. So. I don't know. Like, like I said, the note I got this morning, right now, was there's a lot to think about, and what I think is they're gonna, they're gonna think about it overnight and decide tomorrow. But I think Petrangelo is in trouble, and like I said, a couple managers said that that it it does it does doesn't mean it's gonna happen, but it does make it easier to suspend Petrangelo if you take Nurse out of the lineup too. This series, this yeah. series is now really exciting. Obviously, nastiness uh, thrown in here. But let's start with the Oilers and just how they were able to rebound. Stuart Skinner comes in, does a nice job after being pulled in game three. And the Oilers just look dominant from the get-go. You know, honestly, Mike, I'm waiting for both teams to show up in the same game in this series. Yeah. It's been Vegas 1, Oilers 2, Vegas 3, Oilers 4. We haven't seen the two teams at their best or really close to each other at any particular point in time. Um, you know, Shea Theodore had a nightmare. Like today, Bruce Cassidy, Mark Spector sent me a note. Bruce Cassidy was talking about how, you know, we're a pretty disciplined team and we don't take retaliatory penalties or stick penalties. And, you know, unfortunately for him, Shea Theodore had just a nightmare first period. He took a couple penalties. He had the giveaway that ended up in his own net. And, you know, it was it was 3 nothing. And I really thought the biggest moment of the game was, you're talking about Skinner, is... It was a lot like game two. He didn't have a lot of shots early, but the ones he got were big. And it was 2 nothing. and he made a huge save off Mark Stone. Stone got cross-checked in the back, and he was furious about it. And the Oilers went down the ice, and Ekholm scored to make it 3 nothing. And for there, like for all intents and purposes, the game, the game was over. Here it is. And he makes a huge save there. Yamamoto with the cross-check. Stone's obviously very mad, and they go down the ice and score. I thought this was really the biggest sequence of the game in terms – it goes from 2-1 to 3-0. And, uh, you know, the power play was going for Edmonton tonight early. And, 
you know, I, I think the, ama the the thing at the end of the game that really amazed me is that I think Petrangelo is one of the smartest players in, in the league. I, I, I do, and that shows me just how much, like, it was clearly, and this is what happens when you're a great player in the playoffs, people go after you. Yeah. And Petrangelo reached his limit. He, mm -hmm. he was doing a slow boil, and he finally went over, and that was the thing that shocked me the most because I think he's a really sharp, smart guy, and it just shows that even players like that can lose their cool. Uh, it just shows like the emotion of it, yeah. right? And just just mm -hmm. what goes in with that. It, it was that something else? I haven't seen that in a while. You know. Yeah. Wow. You know, we like you used to see that. Like I know in your league, like that happens like <laughs> yeah. four times a game. Yeah. How many yeah. times have you been suspended? Uh, let's just let's just keep things between the between the lines. Did you get here. thrown out of the league like Merrick did once? Uh, no. Oh, oh, I want to hear that I've story. Seen, I've, I've seen Merrick lose it in ball hockey. It's oh my bad God. Scene. <laughs> And ice hockey. Yeah, he's he's. he's let's a, let's a just maniac. put it this way. I once slew footed a goalie. His helmet came off, and I was around 28 at the time. And when his helmet came off, I realized he was probably in his late 50s. So that felt really bad. Yeah. Anyway, we should get. Who to are you like, goalie. Racky and Youngblood? <laughs> yeah, I wish. No, <laughs> I, Racky actually fought. I just run. <laughs>